Draw. Kenilworth Road is John Motson. A familiar cut tie atmosphere at compact Kenilworth Road. A full house of 10,000, 2,000 from Southampton and 8,000 Luton supporters wondering if 22-year-old Scott Oakes can produce his cup heroics of last season when he scored against Newcastle here and then got a hat-trick against West Ham which took Luton into the semi-final. Six survivors only from Wembley in David Pleat's team. One of the absentees, Julian James, is suspended. So number seven, Paul Telfer, will play at right back. And there's a Luton debut up front for 33-year-old Wayne Biggins on loan from Stoke. The sale of John Hartson has left Luton light in that area. Biggins' partner is another 33-year-old, Kerry Dixon, playing against one of his old clubs. And their manager, Alan Ball, is without Ken Moncow, who's suspended, Jason Dodd, who's ill, and Ronnie Eckerlund, who's injured. So it's a five-man defence with Simon Charlton playing his first game since October. Up front, there's the Letitia factor, with Saints' new capture from Chelsea, Neil Shipperley, who cost them £1.2 million. Gerald Ashby of Worcester gets this cup tie started, Luton in white, playing from the right, Kerry Dixon straight away to Biggins, bustled off it by Magilton, now Letitia. Two teams who like to play the ball to feet here today, we'll see if they can do that in the hurly-burly of an FA Cup match, here's Shipperley, it's got a bit of a ring to it this fixture, reminiscing before the game with Laurie McMenemy about a match here a few years ago which ended 3-3 between the two clubs seen on match of the day and it ended in fog but the weather conditions here are fine the pitch is very green for this stage of the season possibly the best it's ever been here in January and this is Bruce Grobelar straight to Oaks though he's got Dwight Marshall wide here Back to Telfer and into Waddock. And Alan Ball in the cap at the far end of the Southampton bench. Lots of talk this week about the proximity of officials and uh, players to the crowd. Well, they couldn't be closer than they are at Luton. by Kerry Dixon to Marshall he takes on Benali and beats him Biggins near post and cleared by Widrington it's a good break by Luton and now we'll see if the corners that David Pleat was practicing yesterday with Biggins at the heart of it in there are going to pay dividends today he's got Johnson and Thomas coming up deeper from the 18 yard line Oh, and there was Thomas and Johnson off the line, Mitchell Thomas's effort. And Oaks again for Luton. Well, they worked so hard in freezing conditions yesterday morning in the snow on that corner, and it nearly brought the first goal. Four and a line up front here for Luton. Oaks. They've started well, the Ensley side. Telfer, Oaks again. This is Priest. Still got three in there, though. Waddock. Mitchell Thomas wide. It's going towards Marshall. Oh, and Charlton came in behind him, and Luton appeal for a push. Gerald Ashby says no foul. But the corner, delivered by Scott Oaks, caused Southampton concern and watch for Mitchell Thomas coming in here there's the header and the man on the line just gets it away with Grobelar beaten Simon Charlton I think it was forward by Priest, good ball, Oaks to Dixon Well, Kerry Dixon perhaps prefers to remember his Chelsea get days to his Southampton career, which wasn't very long. But uh, 
he's a good campaigner and he picks this up here from Oakes and he's got a testimonial coming up at Chelsea that's a good looking ball Heaney was the player he found Schiphol is coming in and Southampton's first opening a corner forced given away by Johnson on the stretch to stop Schiphol an attack inevitably orchestrated by Letizia who is now ambling across to take the corner good move now Richard Hall is forward talking to Shipley on the edge of the area perhaps debating who should come in first for this but uh, in any event some shoving gives a free kick to Luton that was his first sight of goal today straight to Marshall now it's Priest and a chance here for Oates or maybe for Dixon yes it was Dixon well he scored a fantastic goal in the Ensley League not many weeks ago I think it was at Barnsley Kerry Dixon attempting to curl that one inside the far upright but it was Grobola really whose clearance gave Luton that opening oh it's a misunderstanding and it's given uh, Viggins the chance to find Priest good early ball tell for the player making the break but uh... <laughs> oh he's out of his goal Marshall they've got two in the middle Robillard has regained his position now Marshall drives it Viggins well <laughs> All sorts of reactions there. Biggins is uh, just notifying how near that was. <laughs> Very close. Southampton haven't won away since the 24th of September. Heaney. Chipperley. Madison sends Heaney on his way again. Defender is uh, Telfer. Madison. Widrington, Letizia. Oh, flicked on, Magilton. Danger here. Schiffley! Good chance. The best Southampton have had. He was in the clear there. Didn't keep it down. Finale, Schiffley. A little bit ragged there, this is Heaney. Oh, it's a good run by Heaney. Near post, Schiffley! Southampton are in front. And Neil Schiffley, having missed a chance earlier, is so glad to make amends. It's his first goal for Southampton, the £1.2 million signing, but all the credit really to Heaney initially. Schiffer didn't get the greatest touch on it actually, but it went inside the near post. Where the Luton marking was on Schiffer, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think they are either. Look where he's got away there from Marvin Johnson. But a goal is a goal, especially in a cup tie. And the Premiership team, who I have a feeling would be berated by Alan Ball at half-time, his words have had the desired effect. They're in front. Now then, the whole scene changes. Can Luton, who dictated the first half, to a large extent, come from behind? Johnson is up for the free kick. Telfer to take it, short to Waddock. And Luton have gone a bit just for the moment. Look at Letizia here. Oh, and Sommer. Well, that was a... Oh, Magilton. And Sommer blocked that. Good thing he didn't handle it. 
as Bajilton struck the second one. Sommer was nearly on the halfway line. Here's Letizia. Now, Priest. They've got runners up here. Dixon. It's got to go on again. Oaks. Oh, he's played that behind Marshall. Southampton exerted their premiership status on this cup match it would look that way here's Magilton nice run by Shipley brilliant the way he curved his run and he's through and he's onside and a good save by Sommer this has been a belting five minutes for Southampton here's Madison trying to resuscitate Luton Dwight Marshall Waddock hammered away by Hall Letitia is on the far side with Mitchell Thomas there's Schifferle repaying the first part of his transfer fee on for Luton if it's played right Marshall leave it to Priest they're saying oh they did look at this it's out to the bed Robolares oh Scott Oates blocked by the keeper who must have made 18 yards well you always know with Grobelar <laughs> he'll take an early decision sometimes it seemed to be erratic but there it was absolutely justified now Biggins again in more space Priest on the far side quality ball needed Biggins Telfer and now Waddock Oaks is trying to make some width here Biggins looking for Dixon Priest oh a chance here for Mitchell Thomas he's better on his right foot than he is on his left and Grobelar was right behind that but Luton made an extra man in attack and the ingredient that you always need in a cup tie real excitement is now with us it's Dixon looking for Marshall Telfer's there, oh and the header was by Johnson it was scrambled away for a corner on the far side this time good flick on here by Telfer and look at that really from there you'd think Johnson would have expected to score but the cover was there away by Letitia back by Waddock they want that width Priest again plenty in there for Luton Johnson again Benali jumped with him and there was impact there Priest can deliver these balls with his left foot all day long and uh, they're diving in front of Johnson there to put him off and Mitchell Thomas gets it down free kick Yes, it was. It was uh, Biggins who was fouled by Benali. Priest. Oh, they've made a lovely run here. Telfer. Oh, and three of them hold their heads in the middle. He was supposed to head that back across, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, the carefully worked free kick. Only half came off. Here's Heaney. And he's in here, Heaney. Letizia far post, oh, stretching there Mitchell Thomas and a fall by Widrington has let Oaks break away for Luton three others with him, Scott Oaks down the middle, might go all the way Dixon oh. 
Well, in the space of 30 seconds there, either side could have scored and perhaps should. <laughs> They're getting some joy out of Heaney in this second half, Southampton. He's uh, found Charlton here. Now it's Neil Madison. Schiffel is to his right, well placed. Oh, and Sommer again. Well, Southampton have had three chances to go 2-0 clear and lock this up. And Sommer is one reason why they haven't succeeded. That's a really good piece of play by Madison. And Schipperle trying to steer it to the goalkeeper's left. The foot came out. Well, I've lost count now of the number of chances in this second half. We've another one here. It's Dwight Marshall. And they're appealing for hands. Given! Penalty! The linesman on the near side must have given it. The referee looked across and it's a penalty for handball. The linesman was the person in the best position to see. Was it hands? Was it inside the area? These are the questions that Southampton are contesting with referee Ashby. But what have we got here? A chance for Luton to equalise. And Telfer has put the ball on the spot. Number seven. Oh, Grumman, great save. Mitchell Thomas can't get to it. Heroics here from the veteran goalkeeper who saves Telfer's penalty. Southampton may feel some kind of justice was done, but the danger is not over. It's Priest to take. And Telfer again, his morale will be low now. Priest. Johnson, Kerry Dixon. Oh, might have done better even then. Bruce Grobola. Well, what a week he's had. Zimbabwe Sunday, Highbury Tuesday, penalty save at Luton Saturday. Could have kept his side in the cup. Oh, good header on by Biggins. Marshall! Marshall! Oh, the best chance of all! He just seems to lack composure, which is strange because he is the joint top scorer. But look here, he did the hard part, he got wide of two defenders, lofted it over the second one, but the volley straight at a grateful Grobola. This is Magilton. Schipperly, a lovely return! It's Magilton! And he's missed at the other end! Oh, wow. Magilton got it over the keeper and over the bar. Dixon with the flick on. Oaks. Oh, Marshall. Biggins in the middle. Still Marshall. Biggins! The 33-year-old on loan in his first game gets the equaliser. With 10 minutes to go, it's Wayne Biggins for Luton. And Marshall provides the pass that he's been threatening to provide all afternoon. He got that one absolutely spot on, the number 11. He's gone behind Jeff Kenner. He's laid it back perfectly. And Biggins on his travels down the years with many clubs just doesn't miss those. It's 1-1 and Luton deserve it. They've had so much of the game, made so many chances. Southampton have passed up the opportunity to lock the game up. And now it's all square. <laughs> Look at the two well, managers there. What well, a good shot that is of the tension down on the bench. <laughs> Shipley in there. Still in there. Oh, here comes Hughes. Feels for hands. Linesman is asked by the referee, says no. Close, I would say that. Trevor Peake is making his way back. Ooh, Telfer a bit lucky, I think, there. Well, a cracking cup tie. As good, if not better, than the one that Walsall in the last round when Premiership was stretched all the way by Ensley League. Neil Shipperley gave Southampton the lead. Luton responded, having dictated the game earlier. They got the equaliser through the newcomer Biggins, an inspired loan signing, as it turns out, by David Pleat.
but the story of that cup tie as it kept the crowd on the edge of their seats was not so much the two goals that were scored as the many that were missed it was thrilling minute stuff in the second half and in the midst of it all Robola saved a penalty now I realize your personal situation is not up for discussion but I would like to ask you whether it's been difficult to keep your mind on the game these last few turbulent weeks in the life of Mr Grobola I haven't uh, been uh, perturbed about the other uh, the other aspect I've played my game as, to the best of my ability always and I will do continue because I know that, that I've done nothing wrong uh, I've thought many many long hours about it and uh, I think it would be very hard for him to have continued uh, playing the way he is if, if things were amiss and uh, I think the fact that um, he, he knows that he's innocent uh, of the charges against him have, have, have allowed him to get on with his game and then football itself has taken his mind off, uh, off, off the situation. Now last year we beat Newcastle and West Ham at the second attempt so maybe if we can do a little bit better than today in terms of finishing sometimes when you have maybe less pressure away from home you may finish a little bit more uh, uh, clinically but um, we had lots of pressure today but we just couldn't force it past that man what's his name? That man, Letizia, looked a mere mortal today in that match.